they finally gave a reason for the ban list. They finally gave a reason for the ban list. Konami, we've been waiting for years for you to explain to us how you hit things on the ban list, and you finally explained it. Now, we no longer have to be soft and squishy. We can be hard and ready to roll out like a transformer. And yes, we're gonna wear this in today's video because it's that winter season, we are cold, and my nipples are cold and hard, so I wanna be warm, like the little teddy bear I am. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Remember to be hard. Try to relax your anus, your shoulders. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yes, we are wearing this for today's video because it's cold out here in Florida and we finna want to be warm. So, even if you can't take me seriously, as long as you get a good old laugh on out of it, that's what matters. So, Konami has finally addressed after, I would say, over a decade at this point, how they ended up hitting things on this latest, what some would call emergency ban list, where, you know, they hit Mystic Mind, they hit Curious the Lights, Wonder Dominion, all that stuff. The last time that they really talked about the ban list and how they hit things is... Like over a decade ago when there was a lot of pushback with the March, I think it was like 2011 or 2012 ban list, where they hit things like Spore, Reborn, Reborn Tango and all that, when windups were like the deck to beat and they were looping people's hands for five, sometimes six cards if they had Pot of Avarice, of course. Um, and so now Konami in this uh, article that they posted while the remote duel was going on, which I've already talked about remote duels at nauseum, if if you know people are playing in it, they're probably just cheating because it's full of cheaters, most likely. I digress. I just think remote duels need to be thrown out in the garbage. But I appreciate the fact that Konami actually posted an article talking about the balance and explaining why they hit things. Konami, thank you. You know what? I'll even give you a golf clap because this is the type of thing that the community wants. We want that communication line open to where people can say, oh, this is why Konami hit this card. This is why they hit this. This is their reasoning behind it. And we can understand better why things get hit or we can better have an idea of what is going to get hit on a future balance based upon your reasonings in the past. If I could get rid of all these bitch ass ads on YG organizations website, y'all need to fix your ads. I know I keep on saying that in every video, but your website is dog shit. Like you need to fix your shit. Anyway, I digress. Let's go ahead and dive on into it here. So they talk about, you know, the big changes that were going into the effect and blah, 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 blah. So newly forbidden. Mystic Mind and Curious the Lights when Dominion have joined the forbidden list. Mystic Mind had recently become a key card in competitive dueling. No shit. Forcing many duelists to include cards in their deck that can get it off of the field excuse me, or risk losing once Mystic Mine is played. With Mystic Mine now banned, duelists no longer need to consider the possibility of this controversial field spell card stalling a duel for several consecutive turns. Even people like my dad who played Mystic Mine Burn and who loved the deck said, I love this card, but it is toxic for the game because it needs to be banned. It forces the opponent to either negate it when it's played or have an out in their deck. And if they don't, well, then you're just going to be drawing and passing, drawing and passing, drawing and passing until your opponent, you know, mills out of cards left, out of their whole deck or just you win in time because you have higher life points. You know, I understand that there's the argument that people were making on my channel saying, well, it helps combat all these combo heavy decks and it helps slow the game down because the game is so fast now. But that's what modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is now, boys and girls. Like, the game of modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is so ungodly fast. Like, that's just what the game is now. I remember seeing this shit happen in real time in 2013 with Dragon Ruler format. I remember thinking things like, they need to hit all the Dragon Rulers, they need to ban this, they need to ban that. Like, ban like 15 to 20 cards helped slow the game down to where it wasn't like, you know, Edison format and things before it. But now as years have gone on, I realize, oh, wait a minute, this is what Konami wants the game to be like. They want it to be fast paced. So I'm sorry if you don't like how the game is, but Mystic Mind is not a healthy fucking card. It needed to be shot out back. Like it is such an unhealthy card. It can't be at one or at two, none of that. It needs to be banned because if you don't have the out to it, then you just lose. How is that fair? And I think people that even said that they love Mystic Mind can understand the fact that that card should not be in the fucking game. And I'm sorry if you hate how Yu-Gi-Oh is, but that's what retro formats are for. You know, I don't like the fact that the game is so fast and it's not like GOAT format anymore, but 
Jesus Christ, we can't have Mystic Mine in the game. It It is so toxic. <laughs> like, I understand that like four or five of my most popular videos in the past year have been Mystic Mine related videos, but I did not even want that to be the case. It just so happened. Like, I got lucky. Like, if you want to be a Yugi tuber, like, obviously you should focus on things that you want to do, but uh, like... I got lucky with that Mystic Mind garbage. Like, I'm a competitive channel. Like, I love the support that I have, don't get me wrong, but I can't base my channel off of a card that is banned. Like, I did that years ago with Self-Destruct Button, and that shit's banned. Like, you have to adapt, like I have done, and move on. And you may even find, you may find another deck that you enjoy even more than Mystic Mind. Like, you gotta be open to those changes. So anyway, moving on here, we got Curios, the Light Sworn Dominion. Curios was a popular card, especially among tier element duels. No shit, because it was uh, adept at sending cards from the deck to the graveyard. Perhaps most importantly, it's able to send a card of your choosing to the grave if it's link summoned by sending highly impactful cards like Eradicator or Deck Devi Virus to the grave. Duelists were able to return those cards to the field with Griffin and use them to, well, I should say Nightmare Griffin for y'all who aren't competitive, and use them to annihilate an opponent's chances of winning. The addition of Curios to the ban list prevents this from happening and deals a blow to decks like Tier that made the most effective use of Curios. I think that they're kind of late to the ball game on that because with Ishizu Tier, they weren't even playing that. But I feel like Curios is one of those cards like Halky Fibrax where even if it's not seeing play in a format, it's like a ticking time bomb where eventually it's going to be toxic. And once Tier came out, Curios became that toxic card to hit. Let's see. Newly limited. Tier elements have been dominating the advanced format the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game ever since the release of Magnificent Mavens and the fairy type of Shizu cards. Gee, I wonder why. These decks typically use three cop as a herald of the orange light because it could stop an opponent's monster effect while sending one of the Shizu cards to the grave, allowing the effect of the sent monster to be used. The new limitation on herald weakens tier decks that incorporate the fairy type of Shizu monsters from Magnificent Mavens into them. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, Konami, what, whatever you say. I mean, they got to put something for a reason, right? Newly semi-limited. Lira Lucid Recital Starling was previously limited and has now been bumped up to two copies per deck effective December 1st. The Lira Lucid strategy hasn't recently been popular in competitive dueling, so this change may give them a much-needed boost. That's interesting. It, it's safe to say that, like, if something isn't seeing a lot of play, Konami's either going to give back support to it, maybe unban something, or just leave it alone. Like, that's kind of obvious, but it's still interesting to see that if they don't see something like topping consistently, then they'll say, oh, hey, this card's at one, let's put it to two. Or like maybe with Zodiac, hey, this card's banned, let's put it back to one and see what happens. Remove from the forbidden limited list. A whopping five time, five cards were removed from the bidden and limited list entirely. Effective December 1st, two of those cards like D Fisher and Macro were previously both limited to one. Both these cards remain on the field after they're activated and banish any key card that would be sent to a tier element duelist graveyard. <laughs> you could see where they're going with that. Generally, this will completely shut down the tier duelist plays since virtually all of the monsters in a tier element deck need to be sent to the grave to use their most powerful effects. The removal of these two cards from the Forbidden Limitless gives other decks the power they need to defeat tier decks. That's obvious. But Ptolemyus, which was just removed from the balance in the latest update, can serve a similar function to D Fisher and Macro because you can exceed summon with it and then go straight into Constellar Diamond by using it as an exceed material. Constellar Diamond can be exceed summoned in main phase 2 by using a Teller Knight exceed monster you control like Ptolemus as an exceed material while it's on the field. Neither player can send cards from the deck to the grave, and any card that returns from the graveyard to the hand is banished instead. Sending cards from the deck to the grave is core to the tier element strategy. Ding, 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 tier element strategy. Allowing Constellar Diamond to put a complete stop in just about any tier deck. In addition, Constellar Diamond can give up an exceed material to negate the activation of a dark monster's effect and destroy it, which comes in handy against many popular monsters i think someone needs to like just take a an alcoholic shot every time they've said tier element strategy or tier elements deck or hell tier element in general because clearly that's what they base this latest like i guess what you want to call emergency ban list around was just hoping to do something to tier without hitting it directly until we get photon hypernova like that that's obviously what this list was was done to do Finally, Metaverse and Fire Formation Tanky were removed from the Forbidden Limited list entirely. Metaverse, which was previously limited, was often used to get Mystic Mind from the deck, confirming that's why they put Metaverse to one. Now, with Mystic Mind on the ban list, Duelists can use more copies of Metaverse to help them get the field spell they need. Tenki was previously semi-limited and was removed from the ban Forbidden Limited list entirely on December 1st. Tenki is a key card for improving the consistency of decks that rely on Beast Warriors, including decks utilizing the Tri Brigade strategy. Thus, they're giving more support to Tri Brigade decks. Built around Beast Warriors haven't recently been popular in competitive dueling due to the dominance of tier and sprite strategies. There they are, like, saying, hey, here we are. We're, we're telling you that sprite and tier are, are good. We realize this. 
but being able to use an extra copy of Tenki may help out some of the duels still relying on Beast Warriors to win. If you're relying on that deck, you may want to change your deck pimp, I'm just saying. The latest FNL list update isn't the most drastic one we've seen, but it weakens the tier element deck that dominated the three most recent YCS events. Uh, Pasadena, Dortmund, and Costa Rica. This weekend's remote dual YCS is the first YCS event which the new FNL list is in effect, so we'll soon see the full impact it's having on competitive dueling. Tier element, st 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 this. tier element is still tier one. No one gives a fuck. So the reason why this is so interesting is because Konami, for the first time in over a decade, is finally saying, hey, we realized these cards were hit. We know what we did, obviously, because we made the ban list. Here's why we did it. Konami, you need to do more stuff like this because this is what the competitive player base wants. The casual base doesn't give two rats ass. Like they just want to see someone get trolled into oblivion with like a burn or a stall deck or see like a cool creative deck. But for the competitive base, wanting to understand your reasoning as to why you hit cards at times that you do is is amazing and we appreciate it so please don't stop with just this one article and have it be a one-off thing every time you put out a new ban list put out an article and say hey here's the things that were hit here's why we did it you know maybe even tease things that could happen in the future like we're gonna monitor cash tira and see what happens post photon hypernova it's gonna be really interesting to see what they do moving forward with this article and i feel like even whether you're casual or competitive there's something to gain from this article because if you're casual and you want to become competitive now you're understanding why konami hits these things in particular if you want to be casual move to comp move into competitive you now have a better understanding of how Konami goes about making the ban list and just wanting to play a competitive deck in general. You know, I feel that there's a lot to gain from Konami having an open communication line with the players, not just through articles, but on social media as well. Like if people have a question, you know, like if Darkwing Blast is going to be legal for a certain YCS, same goes for Photon Hypernova. I asked if Darkwing Blast was going to be legal for the YCS in South Carolina, and I got crickets. Now, granted, you could argue that I would send an email instead, but you know, Maybe not everybody uses email. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. You know, do you think that this article is cool? Do you think Konami should keep it up? Let me know all that more in the comments down below. I'm starting to get hot in this thing, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.